Hello everyone, it's Miss Angela from the Fort Worth Public Library. Welcome back to another Fort Worth Nature Center Discovery Club story time. Today we are talking about monarch butterflies. Now that's a special kind of butterfly. I have some butterfly wing earrings here. They're not monarch wings, but they are orange like monarch butterflies. And monarch butterflies are known for their distinctive orange and black coloring, for being great pollinators, and for migrating when the weather is cold. Our song today is called Going Down to Mexico, or the Monarch Butterfly Song. It's by Lucas Miller, the singing zoologist, who said I could share it with you all. You can check out the rest of this song and more at singingzoologist.com. Now, our song has some motions that we're going to do together, so I'm going to demo those ahead of time, and then hopefully you can join me uh, when we sing it. Are you ready? Before it gets cold and it starts to snow, well, I'm going to go, yes, I'm going to go down to Mexico. And then we're going to fly like this. Ready? Let's sing. Before it gets cold and it starts to snow, well, I'm going to go, yes, I'm going to go down to Mexico. Well, I'm going to fly, fly, fly. Fly, 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 yes, I'm gonna fly, 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 down to Mexico. So when you see this little butterfly, you see this butterfly flutter by, blow a little kiss and wave, wish me luck along the way, because I've got so far to go, all the way to the mountains of Mexico, winters aren't so cold down there. I'll be back when spring is in the air before it gets cold and it starts to snow. Well, I'm gonna go, yes, I'm gonna go down to Mexico. Well, I'm gonna fly, 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 fly. Yes, I'm gonna fly, fly, fly down to Mexico. Now, our story for today is a book. And it's called Gotta Go, Gotta Go by Sam Swope with pictures by Sue Riddle. What do you see on the cover? Is that a monarch butterfly? It's a caterpillar. Oh, maybe it will become a monarch butterfly. Let's find out. And when it was time, out of the egg came a teeny tiny creepy crawly bug. She was all alone. The creepy crawly bug held up her head, looked out at the beautiful meadow and said, I don't know much, but I know what I know. Mexico, Mexico, I gotta go to Mexico. Can you say that with me? We're gonna say that a couple times through this book. That's a repeated refrain, and it's a great way to get youngsters involved in the telling of a story even before they can read. Mexico, Mexico, I gotta go to Mexico. Good job. And she creepy crawled away just as fast as she could go. Looks like she's gotten to eat some of this leaf. She ate and she crawled. She crawled and she ate. She ate so much she crawled right out of her skin. That's okay. That's supposed to happen to bugs. Now, are you ready to say our repeated refrain with me? Remember, it goes, Mexico, Mexico, I gotta go to Mexico. Ready? Mexico, Mexico, I gotta go to Mexico. Along the way, she met a grasshopper who said, Where are you going, creepy crawly bug? Where is she going? Mexico, Mexico, I gotta go to Mexico. Mexico, said the grasshopper. What on earth is Mexico? I have no idea, said the creepy crawly bug. But if Mexico is where I'm going, and it is, then Mexico will be wherever I get. And she creepy crawled away just as fast as she could go. Next, she met an, an ant who said, where are you going, creepy crawly bug? Where is she going? Ready? Mexico, Mexico, I gotta go to Mexico. Mexico, said the ant, never heard of it. How will you get to Mexico? 
I have no idea, said the creepy crawly bug, but if Mexico is where I'm going, and it is, then however I go, I will get there. And she creepy crawled away just as fast as she could go. After she had creepy crawled a very long time, the creepy crawly bug was still in the beautiful meadow and Mexico was nowhere in sight. Oh my, 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 she sighed. Knowing what you know is sometimes very hard. She was so tired she couldn't creepy crawl another inch. So she made herself a bed, tucked herself in tight and said, after a nice long rest, I'm sure I'll feel like a brand new creepy crawly bug. For days she slept, and days hidden from the world. Do you see her special bed? What did the caterpillar make? The creepy crawly caterpillar made a chrysalis, and she's sleeping inside. Her sleep was long and hard and very strange. When it was time, she woke. She woke and found she was indeed a brand new creepy crawly bug. What is she now? She's a brand new creepy crawly bug with wings, a monarch butterfly. Her wings were orange and black and splendid. She lifted her head, looked out at the beautiful meadow and said, are you ready? We know what she's gonna say. Mexico, Mexico, I gotta go to Mexico. And off she flew just as fast as she could go. Along the way, she met a, a bird who said, where are you going, creepy crawly bug with wings? Where is she going? Mexico, Mexico, I gotta go to Mexico. Mexico is thousands of miles from here. A teeny tiny bug like you will never make it. Do you think that's true? The creepy crawly bug said, I am what I am and I know what I know and make it or not, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go to Mexico. And off she flew just as fast as she could go. She flew over farms and highways, cities and towns, forests and rivers. For days she flew and days, all on her own and only knowing what she knew. But still she flew and still she cried, ready? Mexico, Mexico, I gotta go to Mexico. There she is flying over a farm. Her journey was long and hard and full of dangers. At last she came to a valley. Far below she saw millions of bugs just like her. Look at all of those butterflies. They covered the trees, changing the green to orange. She drifted down and joined them. All but one was fast asleep. Hello, she said. Hello, he said. Welcome to Mexico. I am so glad to be here, she said, and she fell asleep. Winter came. The creepy crawly bugs slept and slept. In spring, the sun woke them. Good morning. Good morning. Will you dance with me? Why, yes, thank you, I'd love to. Two by two, the creepy crawly bugs flew into the sky and danced, changing the blue to orange. When the dance was done, the creepy crawly bug turned her head, looked toward home and said, I gotta go, I gotta go. Goodbye, goodbye. Again, she flew. She flew over rivers and forests, towns and cities, highways and farms. For days she flew and days all on her own and only knowing what she knew. At last she came to a meadow, just like where the story started. She fluttered for a while looking for the one leaf that would do and landed lightly and laid the first of many eggs. It was the reason for everything. And when it was time, out of the egg came a teeny tiny creepy crawly bug. That sounds familiar. Let's look at the first page of this story. They're the same. 
Now this creepy crawly bug is going to go on her own journey. The end. Thanks for joining us everyone. Now it's time to pass it over to Mr. Michael at the Nature Center to tell you more about monarch butterflies. We'll see you next time. Hello everyone, this is Michael Perez with the Fort Worth Nature Center and Refuge. I want to welcome you to Discovery Club this week. It's been a, been a week since we've seen each other, so uh, it's good to be back and in your, in your house and learning about nature. I want to thank Miss Angela for that wonderful story time. And we are going to be talking about monarch butterflies. Now, last year we did talk about butterflies in general, so this might be a repeat for some of you. Uh, for some, for others, this may be something new for you. So either way, uh, we'll definitely enjoy each other's company today regardless. So I have a couple of things I want to show you uh, regarding monarch butterflies. And I have a video I want to show you. And that will be uh, today's Discovery Club. Now, it's been a while since we've actually spoke about an actual animal. You know, the last few weeks we talked about the forest and the prairie. We talked about migration, moon phases, winter constellations. Uh, hibernation uh, dating back to last year. I, I think it's, since we talked about squirrels, it's been the last time we've actually talked about uh, an animal. So, what do we what do we do? I can't remember what to do when we talked about animals. I'm just kidding you. I know what to talk about. So before we get started, we are going to talk. Like I said, we're going to talk about monarchs. But let's go ahead and take a step back and talk about what what type of animal a monarch a monarch is. Now it is a butterfly. In fact, I have one right here. A monarch butterfly. So this is, is what we're essentially talking about. Not just butterflies, but specifically a monarch butterfly. And a monarch butterfly is an insect. So can you think real quickly about what an insect is? We've talked about it in multiple discovery clubs. Yeah. Insects or animals have three body parts, have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. They have six legs. On their head, they have an uh, antenna. On their thorax, they have wings. They have a, the four wings, not four. Well, they do have four wings, but the front two are called four wings, F O R E W I N G. And then hind wings, the two wings that are in the back. So that is uh, what a monarch butterfly is it is an insect. So good job for those of you who uh, chimed in with that at your, at your house. Now there are they are insects, so that's the first thing. Now monarch butterflies are very important, and, and that's the whole point of what we want to talk about today. They're members of the butterfly uh, family, so they're butterflies, and butterflies, and particularly and monarchs included in that, are so important to us. And the reason why they're important, and let's just get right to it, they are pollinators. And a pollinator is an animal such as a butterfly. You can say hummingbirds are, because uh, and other insects because they they uh, spread pollen. You know they get pollen, they get the nectar from the plant, and all the pollen gets collected on their body. And particularly for a, this butterfly here, this monarch, their antenna, all the little hairs are on their legs. Uh, bees are pollinators as well because they have those spiky legs, just like the the monarch butterfly, and all that pollen just collects. And as they go from flower to flower, plant to plant, all that pollen is falling off. Okay, and it mixes in with uh, other plants, and then it allows them to have the ability to spread out and have more of the same, more of those flowers and plants all across. And those flowers and plants are important because number one, they're food for these animals, like the monarch butterfly, to get that nectar. But they're also important for all other forms of wildlife. And also for us, because some of these uh, plants that they, they pollinate are like fruit trees and plants that uh, produce fruit that we utilize. So, monarch butterflies, without monarch butterflies and butterflies and pollinators in general, uh, we wouldn't have a lot of things that we have now, nor would those animals have much to sustain themselves as well. So we got to keep that in mind. Uh, they're also very beautiful, fun to watch. And as we see the butterflies, we see the monarch butterfly flying around, we have to take that in consideration. That's one of the things uh, that we have to uh, be mindful of when we think about wildlife, butterflies, birds, and so forth. There are a lot of people 
that enjoy them recreational going out and bird watching looking for insects dragonflies all sorts of insects and so forth and they look at those and they enjoy it and they buy products to help attract them to the backyards they buy uh, equipment to go look at them really close like binoculars and buy cameras and they also travel lots of different places just to see specific species of birds and particularly butterflies like this monarch butterfly so uh, they're important to us as well uh, and important to businesses who sell items to help attract them so something to think about when you think about butterflies and monarch butters, uh, butterflies in general so the the description for one of these uh oh, there's someone behind me driving right behind me uh so it's a relatively medium-sized uh butterfly orange and black coloration with some white dots along the the edges of its wings so that's one of some of the one of the diagnostic characteristics or one of the ways that you can tell them apart now there are other butterflies that look very similar to the monarch butterfly and the two that come to mind are the queen butterfly and the viceroy so uh, i recommend you go on your computer with your moms and your dads and type in viceroy butterfly or queen butterfly and you'll see exactly what i'm talking about and we're going to talk about them a little bit later uh, but i just want to throw out the description a black and orange uh, butterfly with some white spots um, on it and that's what kind of sets apart from all the other butterflies with the exception of viceroy and the queen when you see the different uh you see them you'll you'll notice it uh just real quickly the main difference on the queen butterfly there's more orange less black you see all these black lines we'll call them like veins you think about veins in your skin um so more orange and then a viceroy has a lot more thinner uh more uh, veins if you will these black lines than a, a monarch so that's one a couple of ways you can tell those apart versus uh the monarch now monarch butterflies don't just show up here in fort worth they don't okay they don't just show up just to show up okay they go through a process well they, they do show up uh to find food which we'll talk about shortly but they have to go through a process they have to go through a process okay just like everything, uh, when we talk about wild animals and wildlife, they have to go through something called a life cycle. Okay? A life cycle. So I want to go through the life cycle of a butterfly, a monarch butterfly in particular. So um, as birds are migrating, animals are moving from one place to another, butterflies, monarchs do that too. In fact, monarch butterflies fly long distances. You can find monarch butterflies all the way up in the northeast part of the united states even up in the states around maine and so forth and they stay in there in the summertime and then uh as they can't find as much food they'll migrate they fly down the coast go through texas while they're stopping they're finding food uh, nectar to give them that energy uh to continue their journey because their journey doesn't stop in texas it continues on and goes all the way down into mexico down into the southern and the central and the southern parts of Mexico. So that's a long, long route. So right now, down in the southern parts of, uh, well, the southern hemisphere, and down further south than us, uh, it's a little warmer. It's starting, it's starting to get cooler. So some of the food for monarch butterflies is not being available as much. So they're gonna, they're gonna start migrating, moving up to our area. And when they get here, they're gonna start. The life cycle so what happens is the mother she lays an egg so her favorite plant is called a milkweed and i'm going to show you a video a little bit cover my mouth i'm going to show you a video a little bit late do you have something in my teeth can y'all can y'all tell is there something in my teeth okay thank you i appreciate it I, I i don't know so she'll come and find milkweed and milkweed i'm going to show you a video a little bit later of what a milkweed looks like but she'll underneath the leaf, so let's say this is the bottom, she'll come in there and lay an egg. Now the egg will be secured, uh, multiple eggs for that matter, uh, on there. Alright, so there goes the egg. And during the life cycle, over time, looks like I have a nose there. So uh, this right here, the egg, create, there's an opening, and now the caterpillar comes out. 
You don't even know if I'm talking or not, right? I'm like a ventriloquist. So the, the caterpillar is coming out of the egg. It's like, I'm ready to eat. So this caterpillar here will first eat the uh, egg sac, if you will, and come out. Now I'm talking. Now you see my mouth moving, but now you don't. So as the caterpillar eats the egg, the egg sac, now it starts devouring the leaf of that milkweed. So you can see here, all the little holes that they punched in, they're eating the milkweed. And that's really important. So as they eat and eat, as we know, any youngster, young a form of wildlife or even kids, they eat and they eat and they eat, and then they get big. And they've consumed all that food, now they're getting bigger. But this butterfly's like, man, where are my wings? I'm just a caterpillar, I wanna have my wings. Well, how do I get my wings? Well, they go through a process called metamorphosis. Can y'all say metamorphosis? Yeah, so it's like a change. Okay, it's a change. So what happens is on that leaf, he connects himself or herself to the middle uh, part of that leaf, hangs upside down and says, I want to go through metamorphosis. I want to become a butterfly. And over time, very short time, the caterpillar now is in a cocoon, a chrysalis. It's encapsulated. Inside of there is that, that caterpillar. And he's about, she's about to go through a change. She's going to turn into, from a caterpillar to a beautiful butterfly with wings. So amongst, among, um, among that little chrysalis, metamorphosis is taking place. Since I just do 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 transforming itself to the point where it becomes a butterfly. And you see the butterfly now comes out, emerges, makes a hole there, and emerges out of the chrysalis. Now, when it first comes out, it's pretty wet. So it has to kind of flap his wings uh, or her wings to dry up a little bit. And then eventually, well, to spread those wings out to dry up. And then she, you can see there her mouth, there's her mouth part right there, proboscis. It's like a thing of those, you know, New Year's things. I've done this on the before. I've made a fool of myself here on before. Uh, they stick them out and they grab food. And once she dries off, flaps those wings, she becomes a beautiful butterfly. Gorgeous, gorgeous butterfly. So that's what we call a life cycle. And the life cycle of a butterfly, like a monarch butterfly, includes the process of metamorphosis, which is that that's four stages to becoming from a uh, from the egg, hatching out as a caterpillar, curling up into the chrysalis, and emerging as an adult butterfly. And this butterfly, uh, they can live uh, very short periods of time. Now, the the monarch butterflies that may uh, emerge and become butterflies later in the summer, say like, um, you know, late July, August, early September or so, um, they will, they can live anywhere from eight to nine months. So they're making that migration. Maybe ones that are born earlier in the, uh, uh, in the year, not so much. They can live, uh, you know, a little over a week to two weeks and they may be, that might be it for them. But then there's some like this who make that great pilgrimage back to, uh, to Mexico uh, can live eight to nine months and they go down there to overwinter they'll get in these trees and they just huddle together to stay warm to stay warm so that's how they can survive the the winter months and times where it may be a little bit cold so we talked about uh, monarchs kind of described them what they look like i showed you a little little figuring of one okay uh, we talked about some of the mimics like the viceroy and the queen that look like them but they're not we talked about what an insect is, a three-parted uh, animal with six legs, antenna. Um, so we talked about that. We talked about the life cycle. And we also talked about metamorphosis. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is a really cool adaptation. And I, I took a video um, a while back, and I think I aired it when we talked about butterflies. So I want to re-air that little video. It, it shows you what uh, the milkweed plant looks like. It talks about why or the benefit of the benefit of consuming milkweed how that benefits them how it protects them so uh, we're going to show you that video so you can see what milkweed looks like talk about 
milkweed and the benefits of eating milkweed uh, and so forth. So, uh, so sit tight and tune into this video as we talk about milkweed. So here is an example of milkweed. So this is the host plant, meaning the plant that the monarch butterfly will lay their eggs on. So the host plant for monarch butterflies. What happens is the monarch butterfly, she flies in, she flies in, here she is, and she'll deposit her eggs on this milkweed. And then she flies on the way. And on the base of this plant here, or the base of the leaf or underneath the leaf, the eggs will be deposited. She puts them underneath right there. And as I said in that demonstration, they hatch out and they start to eat. Now, one cool thing about these monarch butterflies is inside of this plant here is a white substance that appears to look like milk. And what happens is as they eat and chomp down on the milk, or sorry, on the plant, they get that milk in them. Well, the, the milk-like substance. So you can kind of see that white, it's not a, that's not an egg, just so you know, that is a white substance. And inside of that are toxins. So when those caterpillars are eating that leaf, they're getting this milk in their body and they build up that, those toxins in their body so that whenever they go through the chrysalis and stage and become a full grown butterfly, then they have all those toxins in them. And then when this butterfly is flying away and say a mouse or something's trying to eat them, he eats this orange and black butterfly and all those toxins get in their body and it doesn't feel too good. And then the next time they see an orange and black butterfly fly by, they see it, they're like, uh-uh, I'm not gonna eat that. The last time I ate that, I got really sick. And the butterfly, monarch butterfly is safe. So this plant here, their host plant, milkweed, is very important to help them uh, survive in the wild and not be eaten by other uh, well, by other uh, predators. So what a cool defense that this butterfly has based on the host plant. So as you can see, milkweed uh, is a plant we have here in Fort Worth. It's the plant, host plant for the monarch butterflies. And that little white uh, substance that oozes out whenever you kind of pinch it has all those toxins. And it's a great protector for monarch butter butterflies because when something eats it, ooh, it gets a, uh, a tummy ache. Um, it reminds me of my daughter. She's probably going to kill me if she finds out I'm talking about this. But my oldest daughter, uh, she was sick one time and uh, she ate a Cheeto. And she was convinced. And then after that, she got really sick. Or an orange Cheeto like a orange monarch butterfly. Anyway, so she ate that Cheeto and she got sick. And she swears, she swears uh for a long period of time that it was the Cheeto that got her sick. So as a result, she went months and years without eating. There's a plane coming, so I apologize. Uh, but she went months and years not eating Cheetos because if I eat those Cheetos, it makes me sick. Much like the monarch butterfly, a mouse or a bird that eats the monarch butterfly, sees that orange and that black and he eats it and it gets sick and like, I'm going to rethink about, rethink eating one of those monarch butterflies, those orange and black butterflies because I got sick last time. And the benefit goes to the viceroys and the queen butterflies as well as the monarch butterflies because they're not consumed uh, because that orange and black is just kind of like a flag, like alert, alert, you don't want to eat me. And the queen butterfly, viceroy butterfly, both orange and black, they benefit because other animals they can't see the detail that you and I can. You know, you and I can look at that queen butterfly and say, mm, you're a queen, you're a viceroy. But they don't know it. And they see it and like, no, sorry, I'm going somewhere else. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video and learned a little, about, a little bit about how cool uh, the milkweed and the role it plays in helping uh, in a line of defense for the monarch butterfly. Well, that's gonna conclude our discovery club for this week. I thank you again for your attendance and appreciate um, all that you do as far as attending. I hope uh, if this is uh, your spring break week, 
I hope you, you enjoyed it and thank you for tuning in for that uh, part of your spring break. Uh, otherwise, uh, everybody else, enjoy your day. Uh, again, thanks for tuning in. Thanks, Miss Angela, once again at the Fort Worth Public Library. And uh, tune in next time in a couple weeks. Uh, next month, for the month of April, we're going to be focusing on state symbols. So your Texas state symbols. So start doing some uh, reading on your Texas state symbols. The first uh, half of the month, we'll talk about the uh, about animals. And the second half, we'll talk about plants. So symbols that are in a... Uh, Texas symbols that are related to plants and Texas symbols related to animals. So that's what we're going to talk about next month. So tune in next month. And uh, again, have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.